Hello, my name is Amanda Grimes, and I teach biotechnology and CTE biotechnology in the Mesa Public Schools District in Mesa, Arizona. I teach at the Mesa High School Biotech Academy, and I'm here to share with you today some tips and tricks, and as well as some protocols for making some common solutions and running you through some common biotechnology labs that teachers use across the country. And so, one of the things that we've heard from teachers across the country as I meet new people that they have problems with is casting gels and preparing those solutions. So today I'm going to teach you how to prepare and cast an agarose gel so that you can be more comfortable with that with your students. Today for you I'm going to prepare both large batches and small batches. I'm going to start with a large batch and for that I'm going to pour several gels and so I'm going to use 300 milliliters of 1x TAE and 2.4 grams of agarose powder. And so this will prepare 0.8% agarose gels for me to prepare. First, I'm gonna start with measuring out my powder. So I'll turn on my balance. Let that zero out. Go ahead and add a weigh boat. And zero or tear the balance out so that it doesn't measure my weigh boat. And then I'm gonna measure out my 2.4 grams. And agarose is one of those nice chemicals where you don't have to have it exactly right. If you end up with 2.39 or 2.42, it's not going to matter too much in your solution prep. Okay, So I've got my 2.4 grams of agarose. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my flask and then add the buffer so that we can start preparing our gels. I'm going to go ahead and measure out 300 milliliters of 1x TAE. Okay. You want to make sure you've got that at eye level, just like you did in chemistry class, to make sure that you're using your materials accurately. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and slowly add that into this flask and swirl to get any clumps to dissolve. And you want to try to wash the crystals down off the side of your flask. Uh-oh, making a mess. But again, agarose is OK. You don't have to be exact. OK, we're going to go ahead and swirl that. You can see when you first start, agarose is going to look very opaque, kind of like watered down milk. We're going to go ahead and microwave this until it's completely clear. When it's all finished, it should look just like water. Okay. So to prepare your agarose, you're going to need to melt it in the microwave. You can see right now it's an opaque color. We're going to need to microwave it till it's clear. Okay. And so for your first microwaving, you're just going to microwave it until it boils. And so you'll need to watch in your microwave. And as soon as you see it start to boil, you need to take it out and swirl it up so that it can mix and heat evenly. So you can see here, before we had a milky color, we now it's starting to get colorless, but you can see all these little crystals floating around in the solution. And so you're gonna need to microwave it until every last one of those small crystals has been dissolved. And so depending on the amount of agarose you've made, it may take anywhere from two to six minutes. And one of the tips you can do to help prevent some of the evaporation is you can stick a tissue or a chem wipe here in the mouth of your flask. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, give it one last swirl and check it. Again, watching for superheating. Okay, and we're ready to go. When it's finished, it'll be clear like water, no floaties. And that's what we've got here. Now, we can't pour it when it's this hot. You either need to let it cool while swirling it occasionally, or you can cheat and put it in the sink. If you've got sturdy flasks, they will take the temperature change without exploding. And so you're going to go ahead and cool this until it's about 55 degrees. What that means, if you don't have a thermometer handy, is that it should still be hot, but not so hot that you can't hold it in your hand to pour it. So we've got this nice hot agarose. We're going to go ahead and do a quick cooling method. 
and this will allow you to get pouring sooner if you don't want to wait until it naturally cools at its own pace to the right temperature we're going to go ahead and use the water and you want to go ahead and turn your water on okay. and then you're just going to hold the flask into the stream of water and gently swirl to help cool down the surface of the flask and then turn the liquid inside Depending on the size of the batch you've got, this is going to take anywhere from 30 seconds to several minutes getting this cooled down. Once we're finished, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the water. I can now hold this in my hand. You can see it's still warm, but it's not burning me. So we're at the right temperature to pour into our casting trays.